Let's run our answer set programming solver Klingo on the example that we have just seen and let's obtain this answer set with the atoms A and B. Now for this I have prepared a Jupyter notebook that you can run yourselves simply clicking on a link that I put below on the description of this video. So these notebooks are web-based applications that can be used to share documents where you can put some code and some text or visualization, etc. And what is nice for you is that if you click on the link below and maybe you have to wait like half a minute or so, then you will jump directly at this screen where I am at. And the nice thing is that you will have, you will be working in the same environment as I am here with Klingo already installed there. I recommend you to install Klingo locally in your machine, but just for following this tutorial, you can just click the link and you will be right where I am at now. Okay, so maybe you want to stop the video, click the link and come to here. Now I continue. Then we are at this directory of the introduction of the tutorial. And if you, you can browse a bit through this, this directory. So in the tutorial, I will be putting more material for this. And if you go to the top, directory here, there you will find other material for our courses on answer set programming. Good, now, um, okay, something that you can also do is go to this visit repo and then you will go to the git repository where all this is stored. And yeah, then let's click here and then we will, you will jump to this notebook. And here it just says that this notebook contains examples of the introduction and as you see, well, what I can tell you is that each of these is called a cell and some of these cells contain text like these four first ones and other contain text like this one. You know? So here for playing with it, I think you just need to modify the ones where we have some code. Okay, then let's go to this first example. This is this example one that we have seen in the slides and I have just written it here. And in the first line, I use this directive this command that is called file example one and when I execute this cell it writes this program to the file example one.lp so for running it I just click here and I may go to run and then it says it was already said there but actually uh, you have to run it again if you want to have the file example one.lp in your directory as you will see here right it just appeared there because I ran it and yes so this is the logic program that we saw before and what you can do is instead of clicking on run you just press ctrl and enter and you have the same effect this is what you have to do to execute the cells good now to run Klingo and try to find all its answer sets all we have to do is in this cell to write this. So this is an exclamation mark that is used if you are going to run a command and the command that I'm going to run is Klingo that as I told you we have already installed this in this Jupyter notebook in this environment and we tell Klingo that the input consists of just this file exa example one.lp that has these three rules here and with zero I'm telling the system give me all answer sets and then when I execute this then this is what I get. It says that Klingo version I'm using this 5.4.0 and that it's reading from this file, example1.lp. Now when it starts looking for a solution, it prints this solving. And here in some problems, it may take a long time. It depends on the problem. But in this case, it's such a simple program that it, it took almost nothing to find the answer, which has BA. And it also tells me that the program is satisfiable, which means that it has some answer set. And yeah, here it gives us some additional information that now is not relevant for us, like that there is one model and also the time that it took to solve the problem. But now let's not go through that, right? So the good news is that we asked for all the answer sets. And in fact, we got what we expected, the set with A and B. Now, something important is that the 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 output is a set so it is printing ba but it could also print ab so it doesn't matter in which order the klingo prints the answer because it's a set and it doesn't and in a set the elements are not ordered so 
it's also not defined in which order Klingo will print the atoms of an answer set. In this case, it was BA, but it could also have been that it was AB. Hmm? But what is in, but yes, let's leave it there. This is a set. Also something, as I told you, the program for Klingo is not ordered. Here we have written it in order because this is the methodology that we propose. But if we just change this rule and write it below, and now we execute again the cell. And now just for, for checking, you can come here and see that when you open this example one.lp, the file is in the order that you have written, right? Now, if you come here and we run again, then we get exactly the same output, right? Because for Klingo, it doesn't matter in which order we write the rules. Hmm? And also, in the same way, it doesn't matter if we write a rule twice. The result will be the same. So we write it again, and then here we test Klingo, and we get again the same input. So it doesn't matter in which order the atoms are written, it doesn't matter in which order we write the rules, and it doesn't matter if we repeat the rules. But again, as I explained to you before, we are going to write the rules in order because then things are easier for us to understand the program and also to analyze it and it's more natural. And also, well, I think this is more or less obvious. We are not going to write rules twice. Why should we? Okay, and just um, some minor things for those of you who see this for the first time. It really doesn't matter where you put the, the spaces here in the text, okay? So for Klingo, it basically will Will, doesn't take into account these extra spaces that you could put. So if we write the file like this and then we run it, then again we get the same result. Hmm. Good. Let's get this back to where this was. And yes, okay, now let's see something else that may be of interest at this point. When we were here at the slides, we compute this answer set AB just by applying the rules in order. But something that you could already observe here is that if we forget about the application of the, no, let's go better from the beginning. That if we just consider up to here, the program where we just have applied the rule A, then the empty set and A are the stable model of the program that just contains the choice rule, right? So if you look at this picture, and you see the first here row after the empty set, this has the answer sets of the program that just contains this choice rule. And if we look at the sets in the second row here, let's call this row zero. This is row one, row two, or layer two. Then here, there are these two answer sets, the empty one and the one with AB, and these are the answer sets of this program up to here. The program that has the choice rule and BFA has these two answer sets. And the program that has the three rules just has A and B. And this is also something nice of writing the program in order, because if you start deleting rules from the bottom to the top, then you are going through in this, in this graph bottom to, the, to up, right? So if we forget about this, we delete this, then we get the answer sets of this program here. And we can do something similar here by erasing the rules. So now if we erase this, we save it again, and then we run it here. Now we have two answers, the empty one and AB. And these were exactly the ones that we were getting here. You see up to here, these two answers, and this is exactly what happens here with these two, we get these two. And if we delete this one and we are only left with the choice rule and then we run here, Klingo on that file, then we just have the empty set and A, which is exactly what we had here, right? With the choice rule, the empty set and A. And this is a nice feature of this easy answer set programming methodology that you can just go um, from bottom to top and you are building this, this, this graph that we have seen. And let me just here a second. If we undo, 
this then now what we have done is I have deleted the rules, but actually what makes sense is to comment them, right? And this is what the 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 way we comment the lines in Klingo is by adding this this percentage say, um, symbol um, in a line. So everything that is at the right of this symbol then is commented. So this program is the same as this one, right? But this is, it's nice, I just to comment the rules so that of course you don't have to rewrite them again. So just to show the, to show you when I comment this and I run it here, again, this is what happens. No? So what you will typically do is you have a program and if there's something, you don't get the result that you expect, maybe you will say, okay, then I will comment this rule and I say, what are the answer sets of the program that is on top of this? And this only works if you write the program in order. You can try it now yourself. If you put the program in another order, what that this technique doesn't work, right? And this is related to the fact that logic programs are a set of atoms where the order doesn't matter. But we do this trick with writing them in order. And then if you write them in order, then you have this property that you can go deleting the rule from the bottom to the top, and then you are getting the answer sets of the of the rest of the of the program, and they agree with what we see here in the graph. Okay. And now just a minor thing. Well, not a minor thing, but something that is nice is that we have also added this what is called in Jupyter magic command here, Klingo, so that just by writing these two percented symbols, Klingo, and then a minus and zero, and here we route, write the files, then what we are telling the system is run Klingo with this file and give us all the answers. And to tell to read from, from the cell, we use this minus symbol. Okay, then let's move on.